Now I took the bait back in the day. I sold some ETC, Ethereum Classic that I was holding around $7 because I remember seeing the news of the double spend and hacking and all the FUD. And I mean, maybe it's not FUD, it's actually a bad thing for the network, but I sold it and of course it rockets. But I still have my bag of Zcash, so I'm just gonna double down on Zcash rather than ETC at these levels. First things first, shared by Ripple Panda XRP, and I believe this gentleman actually attended Ripple's annual event Swell back in Singapore just a couple years back. We can see XRP is listed as one of the 18 cryptocurrencies in the green list. We have the Japan Virtual and Crypto Assets Exchange, a group of 31 exchanges plans to release this crypto green list of 18 popular cryptos at the end of this month. To no surprise, we have some of the legacy tokens included, such as Bitcoin, Ether, XRP, and Litecoin. So we'll keep a close eye on which other assets are named in that list by the 31 Japanese crypto exchanges. Now, next up is Grayscale. They shared the snapshot of all of their investment products yesterday. Now, let's look at some of the assets under management. As we can see, they're holding about $60 million worth of Zcash. Now, Barry Silbert of Digital Currency Group that owns Grayscale called Zcash and predicted it to hit $1,500, $1,500 per Zcash. Time will tell with that one, but as we know, privacy coins are going to be crucial for the future. Now we also have $15 million of XLM, $180 million of Litecoin. Notice it was also in that green list. $9 billion worth of Ethereum. And what's crazy to me is this, for Ethereum Classic ETC, $467 million. Now side by side, we have Ethereum Classic on the left, and we have Zcash on the right, both on the weekly time frame. Now, coming out of this cup, Ethereum Classic absolutely rocketed, reaching all the way up to almost a 4.236, really hitting about that 3618. Notice Zcash is one of the assets, like most, that is still below the 236, has yet to create a new all-time high price compared to its previous 2018 high. Now, I took the bait back in the day. I sold some ETC, Ethereum Classic, that I was holding around $7 because I remember seeing the news of the double spend and hacking and all the FUD. And I mean, maybe it's not FUD. It's actually a bad thing for the network. But I sold it, and of course, it rockets. But I still have my bag of Zcash, so I'm just going to double down on Zcash rather than ETC at these levels. Betting that Zcash at the very least can get up to these retracements, if not reach some of these golden extensions. I actually circled the 1618 Fibonacci extension, mainly because that 1618 Fibonacci extension is very close to Barry Silbert's price prediction for Zcash of $1,500. And I believe he made that on Twitter. I did share it. Um, back in December, so just a few months back. Now they're holding $60 million. Of course, he has a vested interest, so take that with a grain of salt. But I think Zcash is gonna do some great things for the privacy space, so definitely recommend looking at it. I do know that they have a network upgrade coming up in April, so could that be correlated with some price action? Or did we already see that pump kind of preceding that news? Now, keep in mind, if Zcash or any assets like Litecoin, XRP, XLM, all of them are around the 236, if not below the 236 Fibonacci retracement. Not financial advice, but I'm personally gonna be swinging the bat with these guys because they have yet to create an all-time high. If Zcash simply did what ETC did when it went parabolic, exploding from the 236, where we're at today, and reached a 3618 or even candle bodies on the 2618 to perfection on the weekly time frame, that could be potentially anywhere from a $2,000 or $3,000 Zcash. Now, if you think that's crazy, let's just stick to Barry Silbert's prediction, but I'm definitely entertaining those possibilities. I always find it interesting that after the ICO for Zcash, that uh, the candle body, the wicks and distribution, look at this, reach a full 34 extension to perfection. Which assets have reached a 34? I tweeted a big list of them, if you guys are curious, on Twitter of a variety of assets that reach a full 34 extension, and some of which do close wicks like this someday. I don't think Zcash necessarily does. I think that's just way too high, but what do I know? And of course, I can be wrong, so please keep that in mind, guys. I'm just sharing my thoughts, but I'm going to be handling it like XRP, XLM, Zcash, even Algo and HBAR around the 236, somewhere a little higher at the 382. I'm more bullish on those guys than assets that are up here in these golden extensions because there's more ROI. There's a better percent return opportunity. So what if this fractal of Zcash and XRP are just drawing out on this price chart? And what if they're going to mimic a similar move that ETC did see back last year when it exploded? Now, if any of my assets in the future do these types of crazy parabolic moves like Ethereum Classic, 
Yes, I'm going to be taking profits, at least selling half of my bag or a third of my bag, and I'll attempt after selling it and staggering it out, buying back lower, because chances are this is not sustainable. When an asset goes up over 10x in a matter of one or two months, it's going to come back down. So even if I stagger sells at these retracements or some of these FIB extensions, I'm definitely going to buy back, improve my position, or take these profits and go into an asset like Zcash and wait again for the next move. So let's just see how long this move actually took with the ruler from the 236 exploding all the way up to that wick i mean look at that right here 28 days so one month and it did a 1200 percent move well over a 10x in a single month i'm gonna be selling because i want to realize profits i know it's all fun to you know hold in diamond hands but for me i want to make sure that i'm getting some returns and taking profits just remember that grayscale holds a bunch of bitcoin cash litecoin ethereum classic and zcash so in my previous video we discussed the 80 90 even 100 trillion dollars of gdp being tokenized approximately 10 percent is set to be tokenized running on dlt in the next few years talking about the arab fund for xrp talking about a new music platform for hbar casper's roadmap and algorand partners such as limewire and remember, this is an old NASDAQ picture of 300 financial institutions partnered with Ripple. Now, this is also something I want to emphasize. Just like Status is saying, the 80-20 rule or Pareto's law. Essentially, Ripple or Swift or all these big banks, they don't have to get 100% of adoption to succeed. You want to go after the top 20%. So in Pareto's law, you could assume that the top 20%, the biggest banks, actually account for 80% of all transactions. 80% of all volume. So why would you focus on going after every little guy when you can actually just go after the biggest players because once you get one or two of them, the rest is going to be like dominoes. So say there's 100 global banks, the top 20%, maybe 20 of those banks actually account for 80% of all of the value being sent. Bottom line, go after the biggest banks. Also, we saw Spotify is planning to add NFTs to its streaming service. Excited to see this. Now, I also want to play this quick clip of the CTO of Casper, but first, I wanted to go through their GitHub, looking at Casper based out of Zug, Switzerland, wink, wink, and as we scroll down, actually, I think we go to repositories, and this is on github.com, and as we scroll down, I just wanted to emphasize, where is it, algo, 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 wrapped Casper, we have the PikaSwap, which is their DEX, right here, the Casper Atomic Algorand. Notice, so atomic swaps between Casper's network and Algorand's blockchain. So Casper, HBAR, Algo. These are some of my layer one smart contract platforms that I am betting on. And I'm super excited for this. Yes, I'm excited for XRP, XLM in regards to payments, but for smart contract platforms that are emerging and have partnerships with some very large companies, I'm definitely accumulating and staking my Casper at these levels. Even Telcoin, which actually I'll show you a chart of that shortly. I think it's going to do well long term. Tell from even one of its recent lows did an 800x return. An 800x return from one of its recent lows that I did share on Instagram. So I'm looking for other alts that have the type of parabolic potential. And yes, Telcoin, T-E-L, is legitimate. It has regulatory clarity in Singapore. We just wanted to emphasize that. And we had a great chart shared by JT here to help. So Tell, another highly requested chart. And below are my thoughts. Let's take a look at this bad boy. So Telcoin, and I imagine that uh, GRT is actually similar to the structure. So we can see Tel finishing up this A, B, wave B, and then C, so an ABC correction. We're assuming that we're getting close to the bottom and we'll start to see a nice retracement for Tel. So based on his conservative target, the 618 Fibonacci retracement is where I'd expect the bounce to go. Very cool. And I think that GRT actually has a very similar structure as this. But anyways, talked about Casper and Algorand. Keep an eye on them. Now let's play this quick clip before diving into some more news. And this is shared by Rekt Vojak. So thank you, sir, for sharing. Uh, after, uh, for example, this minting NFT from space, what else coming? Oh, my gosh. Well, I can tell you that we are working with several large Fortune 500 projects, um, companies, and a lot of the work is going to be landing on the public network, right? And so this is really revolutionary, right? Historically, these large Fortune 500 companies have not been working with public protocols, right? And the reason for it, I maintain, and my thesis is actually being validated. My thesis is that these large enterprises need some form of central control around their on-chain code. So purely immutable contracts simply do not work, right? They need access control lists. They need upgradable contracts. They need you know, much, much more fully functional contracting. They need CI, CD, all the things that we built. And when I meet with enterprises and I talk to them about what Casper has built, 
They're like, this is exactly the solution we've been looking for. We actually don't want to use Hyperledger, right? We want to use Casper and we want the security of a public network. So if we want to do some kind of tokenization or we want to have high value assets on the blockchain, we can secure them using Casper, right? So they are massively excited about working with a public protocol that meets their needs. Are they going to use public blockchain infrastructure? They're going to use private blockchain infrastructure, right? So based on our research, about 85% of Fortune 1000 companies are actually actively looking at blockchain, right? And when we meet with these enterprises, they're asking us not whether they want to use blockchain. They're actually coming to us looking for use cases. So like, how can we use blockchain, right? So it has... You know, this, the, it's kind of, we've almost hit a tipping point to where CTOs and CIOs are now having FOMO and they recognize that blockchain technology is here to stay and they need to adopt, right? So our thesis, you know, Renal's and my thesis a long time ago was we wanted to build a professional services company because they would need support to use blockchain technology. And that is absolutely proving out, right? So the team at Casper Labs is really helping these enterprises go live and, and they are, they are, they need the help, right? And they're ready to receive it. There you go, folks. Now, quick background. Have you guys heard of BitGo? Remember, they built enterprise wallets for XRP back in 2017. Now, BitGo is absolutely massive. You can see here about five years ago, they processed over $1 billion in transactions per month. Now, as we can see, Nexo and BitGo are partners. Nexo uses BitGo custodial services and wallets primarily through APIs. So we can see with Nexo, and this is linked in the video description, which assets you can earn yield on today and lend out your assets, such as Luna, we have Phantom, we have XRP, etc. Well, I'm still waiting for Algo, HBAR, and even XDC. We got some good news today. We see that Nexo actually responded to my tweet and they said, while there still aren't specified listing dates for HBAR and XTC, Algo listing has been in the works and should come very soon. Very cool. And to no surprise, you can see back in 2019, BitGo delivers the first multi-sig custody wallet for Algorand. Now, who else is supported by BitGo and what's my point? Well, BitGo also supports Casper, so BitGo to build a secure custody solution for the Casper network. So even just a year ago, they were a custody solution with $30 billion assets under custody. So remember, they support XRP, Algorand, a lot of great assets, and many of which are actually listed on Nexo today. Also wanted to emphasize this old tweet shared by Raul Pal. Crypto is the biggest macro trade of all time, bar none. Crypto is the macro. Now, if you guys have some time today, I did watch this 40-minute video by Ray Dalio, at essentially his latest book. The title is Principles for Dealing with the Changing World Order by Ray Dalio. Understanding the rises and the downfalls of civilization, understanding the effect on reserve currencies, understanding spending and inflation, and getting a macro view. And watching this, I had crypto in the back of my mind the entire time. I also saw Bank XRP sharing Bank of International Settlements. This is the bank of all central banks. They actually just put out this Innovation Hub paper. And as we can see, March 2022, International Settlements using Multi-Central Bank Digital Currencies, Project Dunbar. And what's cool about this is this is the completion of prototypes for a common platform enabling international settlements using multiple central bank digital currencies. And included in this document is a variety of banks that we have. The BIS, of course, we have a bank out of Malaysia, we have the Reserve Bank of Australia, we have Singapore, of course, giving clarity to XRP already, and the South African Bank right here. The South African Reserve Bank, a BRICS nation. So he talks about international settlements, cross-border settlements, using multiple central bank digital currencies, and this just came out. And then David Short's retweeting, bridges are greater than walls, with this latest news. We have shared by Multichain, thrilled to announce that we've been integrated with the XRP Ledger. This integration opens the door for cross-chain interoperability between the XRP Ledger and other blockchains. Of course, the native asset XRP has been supported already and more will be added soon. Awesome. This integration will enable hundreds of thousands of DeFi users to transfer assets among the XRP Ledger and other blockchains. So now we can assume that Ethereum, Matic, AVAX, Phantom, Tether, USDC, and Frax and other assets will flow straight into the XRP Ledger as well. Since the inception of the XRP Ledger, we can see over $200 billion has been traded on the XRP Ledger's DEX, the decentralized exchange. And here's a friendly reminder of some of the gas fees. Look at XRP and XLM. In terms of gas fees, there's simply no competition. Next up, I'm excited to share that me and King Solomon, also known as XRP Owl, will be hosting a live Q&A tomorrow in the Discord of Liquid Marketplace. 
So if you have any questions regarding Liquid Marketplace, the platform, co-ownership of these collectibles, definitely check it out. I did retweet it. You can follow them at Liquid Market PL. Also, we have another partnership with API3. This is DX Feeds. So they deployed API3's AirNote to provide Web3 apps with a range of price reference data. And they have the Medium article if you'd like to learn more. And understand, DX Feed, this one new partner, and keep in mind API3 has tons, has 6 million end users and 200,000 customers in Web2. So let's bring these guys over to Web3. We also have a recent quote this month from Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO, and thank you for all you do, Status, for sharing this. I'm optimistic that we'll see some decisions maybe within weeks. I think the questions that the court has been asking have been very thoughtful, and I am hopeful that we'll get some clarity soon. I think this year is going to be the year for XRP. We can also see XRP is ranked number five in the top 10 coins by the Galaxy score. Next up, guys, we have linked in the video description, I Trust Capital. I know you guys have heard of this $1 billion valued company. They are for crypto IRAs and 401ks. They have 24-7 trading. And the best part is that my Roth individual retirement account here in crypto is 100% tax-free, 0% capital gains. So I've been with this group for almost two years now. It has been insane to watch the growth and now seeing dozens of assets available. And keep in mind, guys, there are a variety of accounts that you can create. Notice we have plan examples that you can roll over. So roll over an employee plan. You could roll your 401k, your 403b, a TCP, or a 457, or even some other types of pensions. So for my personal situation, this is a no-brainer because I'm extremely bullish on the macro over the next decade or two on this crypto asset class. And when I make some crazy returns, I can always take profit, put it in the US dollar, and I can always go back to another provider in the stock market. But bottom line is I want to have some exposure in the crypto asset class, the asset class that will swallow all others. There are no monthly fees. It is just like using Coinbase, except for a self-directed individual retirement account. You also get $100 in free Bitcoin after you fund your account. And this is linked in the video description. Whether you're 30 years old, whether you're 58 years old, or whether you have a kid that's 18 years old and you want them to start their investment journey, be sure to understand the difference between these IRAs, such as a traditional versus a Roth. So why did I choose a Roth IRA in crypto? Well, first thing, it's crypto. It offers the highest rate of asymmetric returns. In a Roth IRA, you contribute after tax dollars and your money grows tax free. So the hundreds of thousands of dollars that I made since I put it into crypto, is all tax-free because it's a Roth IRA. This is one of the few legitimate and legal tools that we have available. So this is linked right in the video description if you'd like to learn more. I absolutely love this tweet here shared by algod.ust or algod.ust. 90% of people who made it on crypto Twitter or even just crypto in general, they messed up one of the previous bull runs on the way up. And that's part of the game. If you're down, realize it's fairly normal. Keep your head up. All you can do is keep trying. Whether you bought the wrong crypto, whether you sold and the crypto pumped, I did that, missed $20 million in Luna. Whether you bought an asset and it absolutely crashed while others just went on a ride, it's all part of the journey. We've all been there. Even Crypto Dog, if this was your first cycle, you were supposed to lose. That's how it works. And I know that's not fun to hear for anybody new. Failure is a process. And what's a process? Well, it's inherently ongoing. So it's going to keep happening. But so will success. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit the like button if you learned anything at all. All links can be found in the video description, and until next time.